Washington, D.C. is one of the most historically and culturally rich cities in the world. From stunning monuments and memorials to world-class museums and art collections, there is an endless array of attractions to explore. To help you make the most of your trip, we've put together a seven-day itinerary that will take you on a tour of some of the city's most interesting neighborhoods and popular destinations. Each day will be centered around a different neighborhood, allowing you to get a deep and immersive experience of the city. When to visit. The best time to visit Washington, DC depends on several factors, including your personal preferences, budget, and the type of activities you're interested in. Spring, March to May. Spring is a great time to visit DC as the city is in full bloom and in a great time to see the city's cherry blossoms. This is also the peak tourist season, so expect crowds and higher prices. Summer, June to August. Summer is hot and humid in DC, but it's also the best time to enjoy outdoor activities like visiting the National Mall and exploring the city's many parks and gardens. However, it's also the busiest tourist season, so be prepared for crowds and higher prices. Fall, September to November. Fall is a popular time to visit DC due to the cooler weather and colorful fall foliage. This is also a less crowded time of year, making it easier to explore the city's attractions. Winter, December to February. Winter in DC can be cold and sometimes snowy, but it's also a quieter time of year and an opportunity to experience the city's holiday lights and events. No matter when you visit DC, there will always be plenty to see and do. Just be sure to check the city's event calendar in advance to make the most of your trip. Where to stay. Here are some recommended areas and hotels to stay in Washington, D.C. based on different budgets. Budget. For budget-friendly options, consider staying in the area of Columbia Heights, U Street, or DuPont Circle. These areas are well connected by public transportation and have a variety of budget-friendly hotels and hostels, as well as plenty of restaurants, cafes, and nightlife. Some budget-friendly hotels in these areas include the Hosteling International Washington, D.C. and the Holiday Inn Express Washington, D.C. in College Park. Mid-range. For mid-range options, consider staying in the areas of DuPont Circle, Georgetown, or Capitol Hill. These areas are more upscale and offer a mix of historic charm and modern amenities. Some mid-range hotels in these areas include the Kimpton Carlisle Hotel DuPont Circle and the Georgetown Inn. Luxury. For luxury options, consider staying in the areas of Georgetown, Foggy Bottom, or the West End. These areas are some of the city's most upscale neighborhoods, offering top-notch hotels, restaurants, and shopping. Some luxury hotels in these areas include the Four Seasons Hotel Washington, D.C. and the Rosewood Washington, D.C. Day 1. Start your trip with a visit to the National Mall the open park area that runs between the Lincoln Memorial and the U.S. Capitol. This iconic area is home to many of D.C.'s most famous monuments and museums and is a great place to get a feel for the city. Your first stop should be the Lincoln Memorial, a beautiful marble structure that honors the 16th President of the United States. From there, walk over to the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial, which was dedicated to the civil rights leader in 2011. Take a moment to reflect by the nearby reflecting pool, and then head to the Washington Monument, an iconic obelisk that is the tallest structure in D.C. End the day with a visit to the National Museum of American History, which showcases the rich history of the United States. Day 2. On your second day, head to the White House, the official residence and workplace of the President of the United States. Take a tour of the surrounding area, which includes the Treasury Building, the Executive Office Building, and the Eisenhower Executive Office Building. In the afternoon, visit the National Museum of Women in the Arts, the only museum dedicated to celebrating the achievements of women artists. Day 3. Spend the third day exploring some of DC's world-renowned museums. Start with a visit to the National Air and Space Museum, which showcases the history of flight and space exploration. Next, head to the National Museum of Natural History, which displays the natural world and human cultures. End the day with a visit to the National Museum of American Art, which displays American artwork from the colonial period to the present day. Day 4. Take a stroll through Georgetown, 
a historic neighborhood known for its colonial architecture, trendy shops, and upscale restaurants. During your visit, stop by the Dumbarton Oaks Research Library and Collection, an institution devoted to Byzantine garden and landscape and pre-Columbian studies. In the afternoon, check out the C&O Canal National Historical Park, a 184.5 mile long park that follows the route of the Chesapeake and Ohio Canal. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe for more content just like this. If you subscribed, leave a comment saying I subscribed along with a vacation destination you enjoyed the most. Day 5. Spend the fifth day exploring Capitol Hill, a neighborhood in D.C. that is home to some of the city's most important government buildings. Your first stop should be the U.S. Capitol, the home of the U.S. Congress and one of the most iconic buildings in Washington, D.C. Next, visit the Library of Congress, the oldest federal cultural institution in the United States. End the day with a visit to the Supreme Court of the United States, the highest court in the land. Day 6. Spend the sixth day in DuPont Circle, a historic neighborhood known for its parks, museums, and embassies. Your first stop should be the Phillips Collection, one of the premier collections of impressionist and modern art in the country. End the day with a visit to the Krieger Museum, which showcases an impressive collection of modern and contemporary art, as well as African and Asian art. While you're in the area, take a stroll through DuPont Circle Park and visit some of the neighborhood's many embassies. Day 7. On your last day in D.C., visit the up-and-coming neighborhood of H Street Corridor. Known for its nightlife, shopping, and dining options, this neighborhood is a great place to end your trip. Your first stop should be the Atlas Performing Arts Center, a performing arts venue that features music, dance, theater, and more. End the day with a visit to the H Street Playhouse, a theater that presents a variety of productions throughout the year. How to get around. The best way to get around Washington, D.C. is by using a combination of public transportation and walking. D.C. has an extensive public transportation system that includes the Metro System, Washington Metropolitan Area Transit Authority, MATA, buses, and streetcars. The Metro is the fastest and most convenient way to get around the city with stops at many of the city's major attractions. Buses and streetcars are also a good option for getting around the city, especially if you're traveling to neighborhoods that are not well served by the metro. Walking is also a great way to get around the city, especially in the more compact and pedestrian-friendly neighborhoods like DuPont Circle, Georgetown, and the National Mall. Biking is also a popular mode of transportation in DC, with many bike lanes and bike rental options available throughout the city. Taxis and ride-sharing services like Uber and Lyft are also available, although they can be more expensive than public transportation and may get stuck in traffic during peak hours. Tips. Respect the monuments. Many of the city's monuments and memorials are sacred places, so be sure to show respect by not climbing on or otherwise disturbing them. Avoid driving. Traffic in D.C. can be heavy and congested, especially during rush hour. Parking can also be difficult to find and expensive. Use the Metro. The Metro is the fastest and most convenient way to get around the city, and it stops at many of the city's major attractions. Make sure to purchase a Smart Trip card in advance, which will allow you to quickly and easily pay for your Metro trips. Take advantage of walking and biking. Many of the city's neighborhoods are compact and pedestrian friendly, so walking and biking are great ways to get around. Just be mindful of the city's busy traffic and be sure to use designated bike lanes and crosswalks. Know the city's peak hours. The metro and other forms of public transportation can get crowded during peak hours, which are typically from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Try to avoid traveling during these times if possible. Washington, D.C. is a city that truly has it all. History, culture, art, and much more. Remember, this is just a sample itinerary and you can adjust it as per your interest in time. Whether you're a first-time visitor or a seasoned traveler, this seven-day itinerary will help you make the most of your time in the city. By focusing on one neighborhood each day, you'll be able to experience the unique character of each area and gain a deeper appreciation for what DC has to offer. So pack your bags, grab your walking shoes, and get ready to explore one of the world's most exciting cities. 
We hope you found this itinerary helpful and that you enjoy your trip to Washington, D.C. And don't forget to subscribe and check out our channel for more fun itineraries to destinations around the world.